G'day guys, Nick Dingle here again with another Unity 5 tutorial series. We're going to make noughts and crosses over about three videos in this particular one. And we're going to do it all from scratch. So we're going to create the script from scratch. I am expecting you to have some knowledge when it comes to working with just Unity 5 and its assets. But I'm not expecting any programming experience whatsoever. I'm going to talk you through every single step of the way. Okay, I do intend to make a C-sharp programming series, but I just don't have the time to do it at the moment. Okay, First things first, let's create everything this video and get it ready for our programming in the next video so i want you to click on new i want you to call it noughts if i can not capitalize oh my god noughts and crosses select a good folder i'm going to use the desktop so it's easy to find i'm going to go 2d hit the create project button and it shouldn't take too long for unity to create that project okay so what i'm going to focus on this video is creating all of our assets that we're going to use in our game and also setting up our scene it's got everything ready for us to start programming straight away next video let's create four folders this time around one of them is called materials second one's called models next one's prefabs and last one is scripts so materials are for our colors for our objects the models are actually going to be 3d models which we'll get to in a second Prefabs are objects that are prefabricated, so we're going to use them lots and lots and lots. And then I'm going to put some scripts in our game, which actually control the behavior of our game. All right. So first thing I want to do is get the models in. If you go to the description of this video, you'll find a Dropbox link. Okay. And that'll lead you to this file here. Okay. Download this file. Open it up. And I want you to copy these two files out here. These are 3D models that I made in Blender really quickly. It's a naught and a cross, as you can imagine. I'm going to highlight them both, right click, copy, go back a folder and paste. And now they're ready to go down into our models folder. So I'm going to highlight both of these, drag them in, and we're done. Okay, you'll see it made a materials folder as well, guys. I'm going to ignore this folder for the entire series. You can probably even delete it if you want to because we won't need it. If you want to drag these in quickly, you can have a look at them. They're fairly rudimentary. But as you can see, there's a lot of detail on it, but they're very basic in what they are. In a proper game, I probably wouldn't make them that detailed, but because it's such a very basic um, game, we don't need to worry about how detailed they actually are. So that's that. What we're going to do now is create our materials to go on top of these and a third object we haven't made yet, which we can probably do now, actually. Let's make our third object. Click on Game Object, 3D Object, What? And I want to give this a name. Up in the name section, let's call this clickable pair. And we'll get to what this guy is very, very soon. You can probably guess if you want to. We're going to need a material for each of these guys. Well, not this guy, but there's going to be another guy we make later on. Right click down here, create material. The first one will be black. And we'll set the color straight away. Click on the white box. Use your color. Yeah, and let's move on to the next one, which is red. Set the color, create one more green, set the color. I don't like bright green, I like a bit of a darker green. So let's drag our materials on. So I want red on the cross, I want green on the naught, and I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. Now skipping over the prefabs folder, I'm going to go to scripts, and we're going to create two scripts for our entire game. Okay, Might sound easy, but one of them is actually going to be a large script. Everything I do, by the way, guys, is going to be in C sharp. Right? Just letting you know that now. I'm going to create a new one. The first one's going to be called clickable square. All right. The second one is going to be called game manager. Okay. So there's a little bit going on here. The clickable square is going to create well, it's going to create the behavior of being able to click on this square and will spawn like a naught or a cross on top of him like that. Okay, that's going to be his job. The game manager is going to do everything else, okay, to check who's won, deleting things, creating things, all that kind of stuff, all right? So first of all, let's make this guy a prefab. Let's click on clickable square. I want you to drag the clickable square script onto his components. Once you've done that, we can now create all our prefabs. Let's go to prefabs. I want you to drag the cross, the naught, and the clickable square all down to your prefabs, which means we can now delete them in the hierarchy, like so. Now, before we actually create our scene, because we're actually at that point now, I want to set up some invisible objects. Okay? 
The first one is going to be called uh, where's where's it? ah there we go finally got there the next one is going to be called orders the next one is going to be called game in a jar okay and before we do all this i'm going to put a light into our game so we can actually see things a bit the directional light is the best and i'm just going to move him out of the way so he doesn't annoy me all right, so this is everything for our game. The squares are going to contain all of those clickable squares. The borders are going to be the borders in between the squares, so we can actually see the individual squares. Game Manager is going to have the Game Manager script on him, and the light just gives us light. So let's start putting in our prefabs and working on our game. If you click and drag in your clickable square, just one of them, first thing I'd like to do is set all the position to zero. So zero on the X, zero on the Y, and zero on the Z. That way he's dead center in the world. We're going to duplicate this guy by pressing Control D on the keyboard. You'll see it just made another clickable square. If we hold Control on the keyboard, we're going to be able to move it one square at a time. And I'm going to repeat this process for each square. We need nine of them to make up our Norton Cross Grid. Control D, move, Control D. There we go. There's our nine square grid really hard to see each line though that's all right because now we're first of all going to organize this we're going to drag these clickable squares underneath our squares object okay i'm going to highlight all these by clicking the top holding shift clicking the bottom doing the same thing and now all of our squares are organized and we can collapse it and never look at them again okay i am going to create now a 3d object which is a cube I'm going to put him in the middle as well, zero, zero. And I'm going to put the black material on him. That's why we created the black material before. Thank you, Doke. Now, with this cube, he's going to be the border. He's going to be the one that goes in between the squares. We can actually see the difference between them. First thing is set his X value to 0 0.1 on the scale and three on the Y. And now we have a border that we can use. And we're going to make like sort of a hash on our actual grid. So to do that, I'm going to type in 0 0.5 on the X position, and that'll put him in the correct space there. And then I'm going to duplicate him and move him across. So I'm going to control D again, hold the control and move. It's like so. I'm going to control D again, rotate 90 degrees. And to move his position, I'm going to put 0 on the X, 0 0.5 on the Y, and then, once again, duplicate, move down. Orders are done, so let's organize these guys as well. Click on the first one, click on shift, click on the last one, move to borders. Collapse, collapse. Okay, this is pretty much ready to go at this point. Let's go game manager and let's add the game manager script to him. Bloop. That's all we need to do to him. And the last thing I want to do with this scene is move the camera size, because you can see right now the camera size is really tiny. We play our game right now this is what we have to play off if we change the size there we go we're going to be able to see a much bigger grid and it's going to be much easier to play okay before we go let's save our scene so go to file click save i'm going to call it level and make sure you're saving it inside your assets folder i have a lot of students have problem when they change the folder and their level gets lost Okay, if you want to create a scenes folder, but I'm not going to because I'm only going to have one level in the entire game. And the very last thing we have to do now, guys, is add this level to our build settings, it's called. Okay, if we make our game right now and deploy it to Android or PC, the level's not going to be included. Okay, and the reason that is, is because you have five levels, some of them might be test levels, and you don't want to actually include them in a final build. So you can just include the levels you want in the build and then leave out the ones you don't. If I go to file, I'm going to go to build settings. Now you'll see up here we've got scenes in build and right now it's blank. If you hit add open scenes, that's all you do. With that setting done, make sure everything is saved and we're going to move on to the scripting in the next video, everybody. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in part two. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe and comment. I'd love to see any of those things happen. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Thanks for watching.